When I started shooting landscapes, I was told by a professional, if I didn't get it right in camera, I wasn't a proper photographer. Let's look at that. Hi everybody, welcome back. This week I want to talk about getting it right in camera. And instead of doing the usual videos about exposing to the right, watching your highlights and taking care of your shadows, I want to compare landscape photography with some of the other art forms. And for me in particular, playing the guitar. Now, in that piece of music that we just listened to, two things were fundamental to it. One was the arrangement of the notes or the melody. And the second is the timing. If that had been speeded up or the space between the notes had changed, it wouldn't play the way it does. So with landscape photography, we have a very similar thing, which is we have our composition, which is the arrangement of the notes, and then time is the shutter speed. And those two elements are absolutely fundamental and two things that we absolutely have to get right in camera because there's not a lot we can do about it after. So instead of talking about the usual things in getting it right in camera, they are the things we're going to cover today. So let's get on with it. You better get it right in camera or you're not a proper photographer. So this is the little waterfall uh, on the river here. Uh, so we're going to look at some isolation and we're going to look at some of the other techniques. What's immediately obvious from this iPhone photograph is that the, there's a huge amount of graphics involved in this weir, uh, but the fast shutter speed doesn't do it any favors at all. As soon as we slow things down, and this is a three second shutter speed again with the iPhone, is that we're starting to see some of that flow and some of these relationships are becoming just a little bit softer and more uh, appealing to the eye. Now I shoot with a Nikon D850 and an 80 to 400 millimeter lens with my case filter holder. Now this combination is great for isolating details um, and it allows me to zoom right in to some of those flowing relationships and isolate them. Um, and what that's doing is it's for me to find the harmony, it's for me to find the space between the notes and how the notes relate to each other um, because that's how I look at photography composition is I'm looking at visual relationships just the same way as when I'm writing music I'm finding harmonious relationships and harmony in landscape photography is very similar to the harmony we hear. Now we understand when we listen to music that we like what we hear, we don't analyse it and the same thing is true in the landscape. We don't have to analyse why we like something, we just need to recognise that we like something and point our cameras at it. So if you want to get better at isolating details then allow yourself to engage um, and not with subjects, ju just with lines and harmony and flow. Um, we'll be covering this again in future videos, but for now, let's look at the second part of this, which is time. I've always considered understanding time with landscape photography as something like a superpower. Um, in this particular image, this is quite a fast shutter speed. And as we progressively move through these images, we're going to see a gradual slowing of the speed. And what's basically happening is that as the shutters open, the water moves further. And you can see that some of them have more texture than others, 
And as the shutter speed in, uh, decreases, uh, flow that may not have been explicit with faster shutter speeds becomes evident until you get to these much more ethereal and abstract images. Now, personally, I think having a shutter speed where you can still retain t some texture in the water is advantageous, um, but certainly where we, well, where I don't want to be uh, is where it either gets too smooth so that it becomes a just a homogeneous mass um, versus this type of thing, which is a very fast shutter speed. I think this is about 200th of a second. And if we compare that to the next image, which is half a second, we can see what the difference really is. Now, there's no such thing as this perfect shutter speed to shoot flowing water at, because it depends how fast the water is flowing and how far you, aware, you are away from it. So all you can do, and with this preview screen on the back of your camera, you get instant feedback. You can see exactly where you are at any given moment. And what you're aiming to get in camera is the aesthetic that pleases you the most. So we don't want to be, or I don't want to be here, although you know some people may want to go for this look and that's fine by them. Um, and for me, this shutter speed of about half a second was working for this composition. It's not a carved in stone number. So please experiment with time and how to manipulate time, which we'll certainly cover in future videos in a big, big way. So for now, let's close off on this and we're going to be talking more about this in the future. And if you've enjoyed this little short video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification button so I can get this material out to you. If you have any questions, please stick them in the comment section below and I'll get answers to you as soon as I possibly can. So thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, all the best. Now for some more time.